So today we're going to take a look at Kirchhoff's laws. Kirchhoff was a guy that really laid the groundwork for a lot of things that we know about electrical circuits. So he gave us a lot of equations that are very much the basis for what we need to know. And these link together things like the current and the resistance and the voltage and the electromotive force of a circuit. So we have two Kirchhoff's laws that we need to know. And the first one is very simple. It basically just tells us that the sum of the currents entering any point in a circuit is equal to the sum of the currents leaving that point. So it's very simple. Let's say you have a certain point here. If you have a certain current going into that point, then every single charge that went in there is going to come out exactly the same. So the sum of the current going inside will equal the sum of the current going outside. I1 equals I2. This is very easy, and you can also use this and link it to this, whatever goes in from here, what is coming out will equal to this, what went in. So nothing is lost, nothing is slowed down. Remember, this is current, which is the charge over time, right? So nothing is slowed down or sped up. It stays the same. The same amount of charge takes the same amount of time to move. So we have I1 is I2 plus I3. And you could probably also kind of do this and, and use it for a bunch of different circuits. You can have some crazy circuit like this. Whatever goes in, let's say these are going in A, B, C, D, and this is coming out E, F, G, H. So A plus B plus C plus D equals the rest of the current. So all of it has to equal this. Obviously, this can be different from each other, but the sum has to equal each other. So once that makes sense, the general statement is that sigma i in equals sigma i out, and sigma just means the sum of everything. Now, this is an example of the conservation of charge, and this basically just means that charge is not created, nor is it lost within the circuit. Uh, you put a circuit through a wire and it doesn't just randomly start conjuring up charges and it doesn't exactly make them disappear randomly either. So that's Kirchhoff's first law. It's actually very logical and kind of easy. Thankfully, the same can be said for Kirchhoff's second law. Kirchhoff's second law tells us that sum of the electromotive forces, the EMFs, around any loop in a circuit, circuit is equal to the sum of the potential differences around a loop, so around that same loop, right? And instead of using the word loop, you could also say closed circuit, and you will see later what that means. But here is a very, very simplified diagram of a loop. As I, you can see, I drew a loop over there. Basically, what it means by a loop is that it just goes around and it comes back and it's one single track that a current or a charge could move across. And over here, we have this cell and the cell is going to be basically giving an electromotive force, right? And that we can denote by E. So there are two resistances here. We know that V equals IR. So the V or the potential difference over here is going to be IR1. The V or the potential difference across this is going to be IR2. So if you add these two together, you get E. What I'm telling you is that around this loop, you have two things that are connected in series. It's split to each component so that they can each use it. Now for parallel circuits, it's a slightly different kind a uh, slightly different story because that's not a loop anymore. As I said, a loop is basically a very simple single track that the current is going to move across. So that's what a loop is. We're going to take a look at, you know, how to consider parallel circuits as loops later on in this video. But basically, that's all it means. It's also very, very logical. Whatever is supplied here, it's going to be used finished with the components, each part of the loop. So we say sigma electromotive force is sigma potential difference. If there are multitudes of batteries, then you have to add all of them together. So that gives us sigma. And if there are multitudes of components, we have to add all of their potential differences together. And that gives us sigma 
V. So the electromotive force of the battery equals the sum of the potential differences across the resistors or any components like a lamp or, I don't know, a diode or a fan. So this is also an example of the conservation of energy. It means that you can't just randomly summon energy from nowhere. These components will not have more energy to use than what is being supplied by this this battery because it's impossible to just conjure up energy. In the same way, it's not going to be possible that you have like maybe 6 volts over here, but the total PD is like 5 volts. That means 1 volt is just simply disappearing. That's impossible. There has to be somewhere that this energy is being transferred to because energy cannot be destructive destroyed nor created. So this is also an example of the conservation of energy. All right, so let's try to use what we just learned to solve a couple of questions. And in this question right here, uh, we have a circuit and it says determine the readings on ammeter 1, 2, and 3. So we have A1, A2, A3, and we have these. Now what is very uh, scary about this, or kind of like it throws you off, is that well, first of all, we know that the current from here, let's take the conventional current, it flows from the positive to the negative like this. However, on this one, it flows from the positive to the negative like this. So you see that in this, this, this section where the two currents overlap, the currents flow in opposite directions. This one flows this way this one flows this way and so that is a little bit confusing and here is how to solve it first of all you need to ignore this part and just try to solve each individual loops so we know that over here there is nothing there's no resistance ammeters have little to no resistance so we're going to assume that there's no resistance which means there's zero volts across this part which means the entire resistance over here we can just say that there's zero volts from this the cell of course across that so what we're looking at is we're looking at only this loop so we know that i equals v over r and this is very simple v is over here r is over here i equals 10 over 20 which gives us 0 0.5 amps and then for so a1 is going to be 0 0.5 amps now let's take a look at a3 in this circuit we also see that there's zero volts across this, which means for when we're talking about the cell, this is in parallel with this junction. So there's also zero volts across this part from the cell. So right now, all we have to care about is this, because we are assuming that the ampere has, the ammeter has zero resistance. Now, I is again V over R, which gives us 5 over 20, and that will give us 0 0.725 uh, amps. So that is for A3. Now we know that for A1, the current flowing like this is 0 0.5 amps. For A3, the current flowing here is 0 0.25 amps. So we know that the overall current flowing is going to be towards this side, and it's going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25, which equals 0 0.25 amps. And that is for A2. So that is how to create a solution to uh, a pretty simple uh, representation of this question. So now let's take a look at something that's slightly more complex. And it's this kind of scary thing. So we have, you know, unknown batteries, unknown cells with unknown electromotive forces, and then we see these things. So they ask us, what is the current in the 4 ohms resistor? And that's here, right? So whatever current is flowing through here is flowing through this entire junction. And what we're trying to see is, this is Kirchhoff's first law, which is saying that the total amount of current that goes into a junction is the total amount of current that comes out of the junction. 1.75 is going into this junction, only 1 is coming out of this junction, so 1.75 minus 1 equals 0 0.75, so we have 0 0.75 amps going here. So that's answer to number 1, very easy. Then we have to know the electromotive force of E1. 
So what is the electromotive force of this battery? And essentially what we have right now is we're seeing that one 1.75 amperes is basically split into 1 ampere and 0.75 ampere. However, across this section, the volt is going to be, the potential difference is going to be E1. Across this section, the potential difference is also going to be E1. So what is much simpler to do is we just look at this section, right? Remember that they're parallel, connected in parallel, so they have the same voltages across them. So let's just look at this one. This, this one is so much easier to calculate. E1, we're going to take a look at Kirchhoff's second law here, and we're going to say this is equal to I1R1 plus I1, because there's only one I, R2. So that is going to be 0 0.75, because that's what's flowing through this circuit. We're going to multiply 0 0.75 with 4, and then add that to multiplying 0 0.75 times 8. Remember that V equals IR. So this is the equation. After you substitute the little values into it, we have 0 0.75 amps, so that's the current, and then we just multiply it by each resistance. And that gives us a total of 9 volts. So that is E1. Now we have to find electromotive force E2. Well, what's interesting is that since this equals to 9.0, the potential difference across these two is also equal to 9, and the potential difference across this section will also equal to 9 volts. So let's try to make a, an equation out of that. What we have right now, then, is that 9 is equal to, and the, the potential difference across this is going to be 3 times 1, because, you know, V is IR, and the I over here is 1 amp, so we're going to apply that there. 3 times 1 plus, and then whatever voltage is over here. And that is going to be E2. So E2 is basically 9 minus 3, so E2 equals to 6 volts. So now we've got a lot figured out. Finally, we want to know the current in the 12 ohms resistor. And how you solve that is very simple. I is V over R again. We know that the V is, you know, exactly the same as this because it's, it's connected in parallel. So we have 6 over the resistance, which is 12 ohms. And that gives us 0 0.5 amperes. So that's it on how to calculate and solve such questions about about these circuits. So what's really important is that you can distinguish which loop you're supposed to be thinking about. And I think the only suggestion that I can give is to think about it um, as clearly as possible and try to distinguish which one is connected in parallel to which one and which one is the easiest to pick so that you can get your answer because those usually tend to be the first step that you should take. So that's it. Um, I hope that this was helpful. And if you want other videos that are also on physics about A-levels or even math, then do check out my channel for other such videos. Thank you for watching.